Hello everybody. In the last video, I show you what I've done to this Dayton Audio SPA 500 watts, SPA 500, 500 watts plate amp. I have get rid of the DC offset at the output and also improve the power supply. And I'm going to use this as, a, as as example of where manufacturer cut corner again. This is actually a pretty good amp for what they what what they're asking for. But they have the cut corner, and where the cut corner is the power supply. So I'm going to move that camera to the whiteboard, then I can start talking. Start talking about why they always cut corner and the power supply. They put a lot of effort into circuit design, but they always skimp on the power supply. Because the power supply just costs money. Use the Dayton Audio 500. SPA 500 as an example, it uses two pieces of 2200 microfarad 200 volt cap. Now I'm just going to simplify it, just say 2200 microfarad, they're always plus and minus, so it's by two. It's multiplied by two, two pieces, one, one per rail. Now the, the actual rail voltage is 135 volt, but they use a 200 volt cap. I just don't get that one. I, 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 I admit I don't get that one. A 2200 microfarad caps are usually have three three amp ripple ripple current maximum ripple current. Ripple current is the maximum the ripple cur maximum ripple current uh, rating is the maximum current that the capacitor can handle without destroying itself. So with a three volt a uh, three amps ripple current maximum rating, it's not even enough to have 250 watts. So they only have two of these plus and minus rails, which is one of it, one of it, one per rail. Don't expect to draw more than 200 watts out of that amps and, and, and last more than six months. So capacitor costs are basically a, de depending on the physical size of the capacitor can. So for the same size, they can have they can put a 3300 microfarad and 160 volt capacitor inside of 2200 microfarad. That would be for the same. It will end up with the same cost, or very similar. I don't know why they do that, but I'm not going to dig into it at no point. So we move on. It is the, the 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 cost of the capacitor is determined by the same by by the by these dimensions. Determine the cost. Uh, the can size is determined the cost of the capacitor. For a given, for a given dimension of a capacitor, regardless of voltage of capacitors, they are approximately the same cost. So, a uh, 500 watt uses 135 volt. Actually, it should be lower, but this M is a little higher than what I expect, because most 250 watt uses 80 volt, 80 volt rail actual rail. So you can use a 100 volt capacitor. 100 volt use, use, uses 55 volt rail, so you can use a 63 volt. And so it's a 500 watt, again I use a data and audio example, then any of you can, uh, can correct me if their rail voltage are actually lower than 130 volt, 130 volt. For 135 volt rail, you can use a 60 volt 160 volt cap, 200 volt, 250 volt, watt amps, 80 volt. You can use a 100 watt, 100 volt capacitor, and 100 watts for 55 volt rail. You can use a 63 volt capacitor. And for for the same given size, same given size. Now this this capacitance, 3300 microfarad at 160 volt, 47 microfarad at 100 volt and 10,000 microfarad and 63 volt, they are basically the same dimensions, physical dimensions. Therefore, same, same money. But the ripple current, maximum ripple current rating at 3,300 microfarad is 3 amps, 4,700 microfarad is 5 amps, and 1,000 microfarad is 6 amps. Some of them can be up to 7 amps, but to be fair, I'm comparing all this in a general general purpose capacitor, not a specific design. There are some specific design, they can have this 
size slightly, just tiny bit slightly bigger can, and have almost twice the ripple ripple current, but they cost a lot more. So in order to be a fair comparison, I compare the same about the same price, same size can, and these are the difference. Now, you go back to ask yourself a question: Do you really need 500 watts? And do you really need 250 watts? Or do you only need 100 watts or less? This is, a, this is another topic now. The, there are many people believe higher wattage amp sounds better. Um, there is truth to that to, to the degree. If your speaker actually demand a higher power, a lot of times it's actually higher current. To sound good, yes you do. But when, but how many speakers actually need that much current and power? Most speakers do not need that much, and you are actually playing music at home. I assume, so you are you are not this, you don't have the same requirement as a sound reinforcement system, like playing hard rock in a in a theater or outdoor theater. So it's not the same. So it, it, when you play music at home, you don't have 100% duty cycle, meaning your explosions or your heavy bass are not constant 100%. You may have 50% duty cycle once in a while, most of the time it's like 10 or 25%. That amp, that data and audio amps are actually rated, rated their power at one third power duty cycle. So they are counting on people not to have that explosion 100% of the time. Now that is not something that I would recommend when I design an amp. I would rather rate the amp lower at wattage but 100% duty cycle. That is a more meaningful rating than the higher wattage at 130 duty cycle. So we are assuming all the audio file amps are rated at wattage at 100% duty cycle. Let's assume. I know some. I know some manufacturers fudge fudge their numbers, but let's assume they're rated at hundred percent duty cycle. So why is higher power amp sounds better or sounds different? Let's not say sounds better because they don't they all they don't all sound better, but they sound different. But you don't use that much power. You you still have the same volume from that same speaker with two different amps. You're not using more power just because the amp has more power available. So you have a you have a given size of bucket or a bowl, and you try to fill the bowl with water with a small tap, low wattage amp, or big tap, high wattage amp. You can only hold the same amount of water no matter how fast or how big the water tap is. Same thing. Your speaker can require the same amount of wattage no matter how big your amp is available. But what what you may have been hearing is the numbers of output devices, number of transistors. The higher wattage amp usually have more usually use more number of transistors. So therefore lower impedance the, low, the lower impedance because of not more number of transistor, more number of water taps, the water flow faster. But it can only flow as much and as fast as much as your bowl can hold. It all depends on how much the speaker wants, not how much the amps wants to drive out. It's how much the speaker wants. So all this water tap coming to a joint and this single water tap going to the speaker. So this is a this is a water tap that control all the flows. However, when you looking at this point, looking back at the amp, if you have more number of transistor and output stage, you have a lower impedance. The lower impedance usually is at the higher power amp is not because it has higher power, it is because it has more number of transistors at the output stage. So that that is that might have been something that you are hearing with higher power, power amp. 
so you gotta remember the in the the relationship of uh, output impedance is the number of output transistor. The higher the higher the output, the more transistor at the uh, higher the output voltage, the more transistor at the output. Therefore, lower impedance. So what if if you have a lower voltage output power amp, but you parallel as many as transistor as the higher voltage power amp? Is that a new concept? That might be a concept that a lot of people don't get it because they, they, they're also thinking from the other angle, why do I need that many transistors at low output, low voltage output? Because you want higher, you want, you want lower impedance, that means you need more output transistor. That's when I did my NSL power amp, I used 288 small signal op amp to get the impedance as low as a 200 watt amp but it's only produced 28 watts. But it sounds, sounds like 100 watts, sounds like 150 watts. That the, that's the concept that a lot of people don't get it. Now, it's, I, don't, I get why they don't get it because trying to sell you low impedance is difficult. But marketing said, trying to sell you high power is easy. High power, man. It's easy. How many people understand high power than Low output impedance. I bet it's like 1 to 150, 1 to 200. So marketing doesn't want to waste time to educate people. They just want to push boxes. And you know, lots of people work in marketing doesn't even know what they're marketing for. They don't even know the product. They just want to throw words into, into, some, into the puppet and sell boxes. As long as they move boxes, they've done the job. So anyway, so when you when you when you say higher wattage power amp sounds better than the lower wattage on your speaker, it's not necessarily the higher wattage because you don't play it louder, you don't use more wattage. So in order, so, but but from a marketing point of view, you have to sell high wattage output power amp in order to sell more. Now what what happened when you when you get up to when you get from hundred watts to two hundred fifty watt, you have to raise the voltage of the capacitor from 63 volt to 100 volt. That, in order to keep the cost the same, you gotta lower the capacitors. That's the problem of this. They cannot raise the price, they had to keep the price. So they raise the voltage to 160 volt, or in that case 200 volt, but they have to lower the capacitors. Capacitors mean currents. No currents, you can't drive a speaker, but they can claim wattage, one third duty cycle. I'm not knocking that amp, that amp I still like it after they improve it, but marketing just force them to do what even engineer doesn't want to do, but they have to do it in order to sell. So I'm doing it again. If you have 100 watt amps, you can use a 10,000 microfarad capacitor. But if you, if the market is saying you're gonna raise it to 250 watts in order to sell, then the engineering has to lower the capacitor to 47 micro, 4700 microfarad because the capacitor voltage have to raise to 100 volt to keep the same price and physically the same. Unless you can sell for more, you can increase the capacitors. But in the case of this, you have a number to meet. Now in every case, you have a number to meet. But if that number does not allow you to add more capacity into the amp, there you go. It, 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 if they have to sell it for a price point, then you have to cut corner and most of the time they cut in power supply. And I hope, I hope this explains some of the reason that manufacturer cut corner on the power supply. I know I was kind of back and forth a little bit. It, it wasn't very coherent, but I hope this is a starting point. I will do more of this if you like, and I, I can actually make I might separate section by section to explain more why, because there are deeper reason than this white spot can show you at this time.
Okay, the video getting long now, so I'm gonna cut it off. Until next time, stay safe. Bye.